I cannot tell you how many people over the years have asked me, should I back this 3D printer on said crowdfunding website, whether it's Kickstarter, Indiegogo or others. And I've always said that when you back these campaigns, it's little more than a donation. You're not guaranteed to ever receive anything. So I like to keep a good eye on the crowdfunded 3D printer space. And I was shocked to discover that there are no active 3D printer campaigns anymore. 3D printing is dead. Long live 3D printing. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse and here we have Kickstarter with a search term 3D printer sorted by newest. Now, when I say there are no 3D printer crowdfund projects, I mean 3D printers. There are, however, 3D printing crowdfund projects, such as this one, which is a miniatures crowdfund campaign. This one, which is by Joe Larson, who's another fr uh, fellow YouTuber, great guy. He's doing this modular uh, construction set, these uh, printer block mechs. And then you have Make 100, which I think is like a special thing some Kickstarter campaigns that were successful in the past are doing. This is Lock Build. I reviewed that print surface years ago. Uh, it's sort of similar to Build Tack. It's a print surface for your 3D printer. But no 3D printers. You have to go down all the way to the Space 3D, which was the last one that was on Kickstarter at the end of last year. And the story is the same on Indiegogo. Now you can't search as well, you can't search by latest on Indiegogo, which sucks. But still, there is no active 3D printer campaign on the platform at all. Uh, again, Space 3D, I don't know why it's on twice. And then you have DaVinci Color Mini, which I will touch on later in the video. So what does this mean? Well, one of my favorite graphs to look at is the 3D printing trending graph on Google Trends. Now, there's a few factors at play here, I believe. Firstly, it is January, February, start of the year, 2020. That's usually a slump in uh, marketing and sales. Everyone ramps up for Christmas and then they usually take a break at the start of the year. That's generally how it goes. But also we have the virus crisis in China, which will be 100% affecting in production 3D printers. It's already affected companies like E3D who can't get their new Hemera hot ends out because the factory making the motors haven't been back. But from what I understand, companies are going back now. My Gearbest rep got in touch recently, so that's changing. But I truly believe that 3D printing has finally become properly mainstream. And this is a good thing. So let's have a look at this graph. Back in September of uh, 2011, 3D printing took a massive spike in popularity. Uh, from 2011 onwards into 2013 and 2014, that's when the hype was massive. That's when the stocks of Stratasys and that were skyrocketing. Everyone was getting in and it was gonna be the future, even though it'd been around for ages already. Regardless, you can see how it started to settle into a fairly predictable rhythm. Now, I find it interesting, as I said, the hype is usually just before Christmas when people are researching, maybe buying them for their kids or their family members, and then it drops off after that, after the start of the year. So like February, see, you see a dip there. I find it really interesting that there's a dip in July, August though, that's quite significant. And over the years, it's always at the same time. So if anyone knows why that is or has a theory as to why the dip is so predictable there uh, and so low in that time frame. I'd love to hear your thoughts, but you can see there's a predictable pattern now. We've clearly established quite a pattern and that in my opinion means that 3D printing has leveled off in terms of its hype. Now, I always viewed 3D printers, additive manufacturing technologies as a tool. I've always said that. I've never really seen them as, you know, some sort of get rich quick thing to jump on board because it's the next coolest thing and uh, usually that ends in tears and it definitely did for a lot of 3D printing companies. Because when I'm on social media, what I'm starting to see now as well is people from all these different industries now treat 3D printing as just another tool. We have people in the cosplay industry using 3D printers all the time to make cosplay weapons and armor and all sorts of amazing things. We have people doing miniatures and figurines using the recent trend of low cost resin MSLA 3D printers along with the low cost FDM slash FFF filament based 3D printers. Remember Aldi here in Australia sold 3D printers three times now. So if we've democratized it to the point where Aldi sells 3D printers, 
then that means, in my opinion, that most people just know what 3D printing is. Very few people I meet now are really shocked and surprised to hear about it. They've all heard about it before, and it's just become a thing in the ecosystem. Now, that's not to say that 3D printing has stopped evolving. Not at all. We're seeing some really cool things in the indust industrial space, along with the hobby space, as I said, the low-cost resin printers, and we're seeing at the high end a lot of innovations in the metal 3D printing space. So that's not going to stop anytime soon. But what we have seen stop is the crowdfunding campaigns. And I really do think that's because companies have gotten to the point where they will just release printers into the market. They won't try to get in on what these campaigns used to be, which was, it was such a bleeding edge thing that you really couldn't get the capital together and it was almost like a community effort to bring this machine to market. It was so niche that a crowdfunding campaign kind of worked. But remember I mentioned the DaVinci Mini Color and a few other printers. Well, let's just go back to that. So you see, DaVinci is a very large company and it didn't need to crowdfund a 3D printer. What started to happen to crowdfund campaigns is they started becoming used as a glorified pre-order and kind of as a marketing tool. Uh, you know, you would re rely on this, this hype around a release where people will get in to back it and they think, oh, you know, I'm pre-ordering this machine. But the thing is, crowdfunding campaigns never were pre-orders. They were always, as I said, and I've said many times in the past, basically donations. There's no real protections for you. Whereas a pre-order is a purchase from a company, you have quite a bit more heft on your corner to actually protect your investment and get that thing at the end. So before finishing up this video, I want to mention a few campaigns that have yet to deliver. And this is just another warning. If you've just found this channel and you're interested in 3D printing, for a start, welcome. My name is Angus. Welcome to Makers Muse. It's my aim to empower your creativity through technology. These are campaigns that took people's money and never delivered, or at least they haven't delivered yet. And one of them is the Olo, which was renamed to the Ono, which was a smartphone based 3D printer. And the idea is it used a light uh, sensitive resin to cure using the screen from the smartphone and very simple mechanical design, just one motor moving up. Your smartphone was to do the brunt of it, which is why it was $99, it's a very cheap 3D printer. Anyway, this was back in 2016 and I sort of ripped it apart initially and it hasn't delivered yet. And they did all sorts of weird things with getting, uh, selling equity and stuff. I'm not gonna go into it. Basically, this machine has not shipped yet. And as far as I'm concerned, the backers have been scammed out of their money. Now, it could have been just because it was a complete failure and someone did contact me after I did a video on the owner last time and did say a few things that sounded a bit too, like excuses to me. I don't really care. Anyway, the next one is the Pocket Maker. Uh, I almost backed this one actually, and this one never shipped either. <laughs> so you have a lot of irate, irate uh, customers and backers here. Again, what can you do? You can't, you know, it's been years, uh, 2017, there you go. And they've never gotten their product. I don't think they're ever gonna get it. And it looks like the updates have stopped for that one. And then one that I really, really, truly hope ships is the Kadama Obsidian. I really want this one to ship. I don't want to add it to the name and shame list. They had some big issues when one of their lead designers left who designed the original sort of prototype. Um, and that's all I was given when I did my video on this machine was very much a raw prototype, which I made very clear in that video, which I have since taken down because I don't want to give this company any more attention. I'm really sorry if you backed it. I did, I do always try to make it clear that these campaigns are basically donations and it looks like it's gone terribly wrong for them. So I really hope that you guys do get this machine uh, because I mean, $1,600,000 is not an insignificant amount of money from people who backed in good faith that they would get a good 3D printer. So that's gonna conclude this video. Just an interesting look and a bit of a, an opinion piece on the state of crowdfunding in the 3D printer space. So as a recap, there is no live 3D printer crowdfunding campaigns I can find. I might be wrong, but I can't find any. And I really do believe that that's because 3D printing has finally reached a level where it's well known. It's not a hype technology anymore. It's commonplace. People have access to it. And that's fantastic. I love seeing it used as a tool, not as some bleeding edge thing that is 
inaccessible and really hard to use. I don't like that idea. I like it being accessible to everyone. But having said that, there is crowdfund campaigns around 3D printing. So 3D printing different models, crowdfunding those, crowdfunding accessories, stuff like that. That still seems to be alive and well, which is fantastic to see. So people can just use their machines for their creative pursuits. So thank you for watching, guys. My name is Angus, and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later. Bye.